Hello, and welcome to this discussion about what to expect from your hepatitis B treatment. I'm Dr. Joseph Ahn, a professor of medicine and section chief of GI. I'm a transplant hepatologist at Oregon Health and Science University in Portland, Oregon. And my name is Dr. Amy Tang, and I'm a primary care internist and the Director of Immigrant Health at Northeast Medical Services in San Francisco, California. We are providing this information today to empower patients with hepatitis B to better understand their disease, including treatment endpoints, what to expect from treatment, how to adhere for the maximum benefit of their therapy, and to understand the necessity of ongoing monitoring. The goal of treatment is broad, but in general, it's to improve one's life by reducing inflammation and decreasing morbidity and mortality. Dr. Tang, could you expand on that? Current treatment for hepatitis B can suppress viral replication and normalize liver inflammation, thus decreasing the risk of transmission to others and hepatitis B-related liver complications, such as cirrhosis, liver cancer, and liver failure. Such complications may sometimes require a liver transplant or even result in death. Treatment of hepatitis B involves continued interaction between patients and healthcare professionals. Dr. Ahn, what do you believe is the role of each of these players? Yeah, thank you, Dr. Tang. I think I'd like to start by saying that this is a relationship and a two-way communication is very important. The healthcare providers should evaluate the individual patient's health and situation through an examination, review of their blood tests and imaging studies before deciding on treatment initiation. The physician and the patient can then discuss the treatment options that are available. And once treatment is initiated, all adults should be seen regularly by a healthcare provider to determine the treatment's effectiveness as well as to monitor for potential side effects. Well, for new or acute hepatitis B infections, particularly among adults, treatment is usually not needed because the body's immune system is often able to clear the virus. But in people with chronic hepatitis B, an antiviral medication might be recommended to reduce or reverse liver damage and to prevent long-term complications. Now, some factors that influence treatment initiation include a person's age, the stage of their fibrosis or hardening of their liver, um, their liver inflammation levels as reflected by their ALT and AST, which are called liver enzymes, um, comorbidities, which are other diseases that they may have at the same time as their hepatitis B, um, the patient's preference or readiness to take a long-term medication, their virus levels and genetics, and also the efficacy and safety profile and cost of the medication that's available to them. The treatment options for hepatitis B are thankfully multiple. However, they are divided into two main different treatment options. On one hand, we have the oral antivirals, such as entecavir, tenofovir alafenamide, and tenofovir disoproxil. These three are the most commonly used medications for hepatitis B. We also have immune modulators, as you can see there, called interferon alpha and pegylated interferon. And of these, the pegylated interferon is the one that can be considered. Although for most patients, the immune modulators are not their first treatment option. Dr. Tang, can you explain to us and to our audience why adherence to their treatment and ongoing monitoring is so important for the best healthy outcomes for individuals with hepatitis B? Well, treatment adherence strongly influences patient outcomes. For example, if someone forgets to take their medicine or frequently skips doses, they may not be able to suppress their viral levels or reduce liver inflammation or they may potentially breed resistance to their medications. That's why hepatitis B virus levels and liver enzymes should be monitored routinely. For example, like every three months until their uh, virus level is undetectable. 
And once it's no longer detectable, then they can resume monitoring every six months. They should be also followed for adverse effects to the antiviral therapies, um, although they are relatively uncommon with the current first-line medications. So it's important to discuss the following with your physician. Regular follow-up to monitor for disease progression and liver cancer, any alcohol use, how to optimize your body weight and control diseases related to increased body weight like diabetes, how to prevent transmission to others. And you should also inform all of your current and future healthcare providers of your hepatitis B status, especially if you ever require medications that may suppress or affect your immune system. The key takeaways from this video are that hepatitis B is a serious infection that can lead to liver cancer, liver failure, or death if left untreated and unmonitored. We recommend that you discuss treatment options with your healthcare provider to best determine the therapeutic approach for you. To have the best clinical outcomes, as we discussed today, it is vital that you adhere to the treatment strategy that you and your healthcare providers agreed upon and that you receive routine monitoring as Dr. Tang outlined, in order to make sure that the treatment is working and to monitor for the low risk but potential side effects. Finally, we can be encouraged that long-term survival can improve with effective treatment. We're glad that you took the time to watch this educational video today. It is very important that you learn about your hepatitis B so that you can maintain your best healthy lifestyle. We've created a number of educational resources you can use. One that we recommend is an animated video with more information about hepatitis B that you can find at this link, cmeoutfitters.com backslash HBV patient ED. We hope that you will share them with friends and family to help them better understand hepatitis B. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope that this video has helped you better understand hepatitis B treatments and that you'll be able to use this information during your future visits with your healthcare provider.